Steve Zajic with the LA Times, here with Lynn Shelton, the director, Rosemary DeWitt, the actress, uh, here in Sundance with a film called Touchy Feely about a masseuse who loses her, or I guess acquires a fear of touch, which complicates her job a little bit. Lynn, do you want to tell us a little bit about it? Um, yeah, I had this idea for a long time about what if you had to work with uh, strangers bodies on an intimate level and then you just reached a threshold one day and you couldn't do it anymore that had been something that had been sort of stirring in my brain for a long time and then when I worked with Rose on your sister's sister for some reason this woman inspired <laughs> that <laughs> she that character like a woman who yeah. yeah she's some I don't know why and so I just started to uh, that character started to flesh out a little bit in my brain um, with her in mind and and then I really wrote it for her and I it, it was sort of bouncing around in my brain a little bit I mentioned it to you really early on yeah. um, and then at the same time I was also developing this character who plays her Josh for Josh Pice who plays um, her brother were they two separate things at one point they were two separate things at one point because Josh and I met a couple years ago and we had been talking about doing some project and that was going to be a different thing and then I ended up sort of combining the two characters into one I thought they'd be a nice uh, juxtaposition because I mean your character is really sort of can you talk a little bit about how different they are from each other? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, they came from the same parents, and I think she sort of rebelled and tried to go in a different direction, which was sort of a more free-spirited, a little bit lost, uh, <clears throat> tried to maybe hop onto the New Age train a little bit. He took over the family dentist operation, and it was a dying business. And, and the home, too. He's living in the home And he's home living in the house grew up in. Yeah, that we grew up in. And I think they're, you know, they need each other. They're the only family that each other has. And they're kind of at these very disparate points when the movie starts. And then I, I think the movie is about healing that thing that you need. Sometimes it's very subtle. And I think in our film it's very subtle. That thing that you need to kind of just heal before you can go into the next phase of your life. And everybody, I think every character in the movie has an experience. Yeah, of some that. kind of dis some kind of arc of self discovery, and it's a little bit about what uh, you know. You think you know who you are, and then your evidence to the contrary sort of presents itself. And how do you how do you deal with that and try to ground yourself? Rose, what was your experience when you first heard about this? Because it sounded like she was talking to you about it uh, on the set of your sister's sister. And when you first hear the concept, at least when I did, I was like, "But it's a masseuse, but she doesn't." T it seems so kind of neat. What, what did you make of it when you first told her? I loved it. Well, I love, and Lynn's heard me say this before, I love, I find your ideas for film so original and her take and like the lens is which she's looking at these people's lives just, oh I, wow, I never even think of that, you know, so I was so excited by the idea once, and, and there was a big difference, I was excited to, on your sister's sister, I got cast two days before shooting started, and she had been working with the actors for a year-ish? Like eight months, yeah. Eight months, yeah. you know, talking about characters, so I was very excited to do that with Lynn on this movie, and we did a little bit, but really, Lynn was excited, based on the scenes in Your Sister, Sister that were more scripted, to write the script. So we did give her a little bit of input, but this was really Lynn's baby, you know, yeah. in a really great way, and it felt a little bit more traditional only in that there was a script and you know we had a lot of locations and it was an ensemble but untraditional in that Lynn creates a very free-flowing environment and and there were some you know and I, I like to talk about this one because it was part of my process you know there were things in the initial conception that aren't in the movie anymore and for me this was like giving Lynn sort of my total trust because I kind of didn't understand like what you said you're like what is that about you know body version is that a real thing can you google it I didn't really understand what was happening to this woman. But I'm like, I will go with you anywhere, Lynn. You know, and we'll find out together. <laughs> and it was appropriate that she didn't understand because the character didn't understand right. either. You know, it really is. I wanted there to be mystery and poetry and kind of, you know, yeah. Well, and that must be one of the, I would say as an actress, one of the things that's interesting working with, with Lynn, I know because there's, so, like you said, the unique take, but also you're kind of developing the story as you go. And I imagine on your sister's sister, at least from what I'd read, you it wasn't like when you show up, there's a script and this is what you're going to shoot on this day. It was, you're kind of figuring it out as you go a little bit. Right? Yeah, I mean, we would know that we were going to, what we were going to shoot that day. And some of the scenes had a, like, you know, Lynn's called it a scriptment. Some scenes were scenes, and then some scenes were very open and said, and oddly, those tended to be the three-person scenes, you know, where they're like, they talk about life, you know, or <laughs> they confront each other, you know, on the, the big climax. And those were the scenes that were tricky because you needed not only to get in all the, the story points, and we were really spoiled because we were shooting with two cameras. So once... Uh, there would be an odd man out, so we had to kind of 
you know, you'd have to remember a little bit what you did, which right. we didn't really do at all. And Lynn and Nat, our editor, had the hardest job of any people ever in the editing room because they just had to make, to make a movie all these out of this things. crazy yeah. thing we were when doing. When Duplass would go off on some crazy riff. And he goes, riff. And Everyone it's the brilliant. The yeah, yeah. It's the, yeah, I've heard you talk about it. It's the brilliant of Mark. Mark improvisation skills is that he goes so far off right. and mm -hmm. you find a lot of gold there and Lynn, Lynn's face is turning like paler and paler as she's like well the hell am I going to make amazing. sense of this and he really and he really and he really performs for the edit room he said this you know he just gives you as much right. material as he possibly can knowing that you're going to cut it down you know and find the stuff that's good and I want to ask you a little bit about, Rose alluded to it, but your, your ideas for films, they seem sort of high concept, obviously, I think is, is a kind of big studio Hollywood term, but they, they always seem to have a novel hook to them. I think in Hump Day, which of course is your film, uh, two movies back uh, here, uh, was it now four years ago? Three, four years ago? Uh, I guess it was four years ago. Four years ago? 12, is that it? 2009. 2009, yeah. So yeah. This is, it was four years ago. But the idea of two, and Mark Duplass, of course, one of with the men in it, are these kind of bros who want to you know, think about ma making a male porn movie. Your sister's sister, if I think a lot of our readers are aware, obviously had the, the twist about the two sisters and, and the pregnancy and, and all, the, all that went with it. And then the body aversion thing. How do you come up with it? And, and how do you know that you haven't gone too far with some of these concepts? How do you tweak it to get it exactly right? Well, I'm, I am really attracted to uh, concepts that are gonna be, that might on paper look a little bit unwieldy or maybe too, too, too high concept, like too much of a um, unreal, too unrealistic. And then, and then really try to make uh, them believable, you know, because I, I like, I like, like I've read so many scripts, um, really well written scripts, lovely scripts, but you tend to know generally what's going to happen in, by the first 10 or 20 pages. You know, you can kind of see where it's going to go. So I just love the idea of launching on a journey and having all these really unexpected twists and turns, but believable at every, at every point. Those, that's kind of what I'm attracted to in a, in a concept and in a, in a journey through a film. And it feels like when you're inside it, on both films, even though one was scripted and one was less scripted, that you really find your way through the story while shooting the movie. It's not like you can arc it out, you know, map it out at home and be, because you really, it changes, like however we shot one scene, then changes the whole next day's worth of work and Lynn tries to shoot. So there's no point it. in even thinking ahead because it, you may not get there. You do it, but then you realize you have to throw a lot of it out. And this one we did yeah. have to shoot some things out of order, so mm -hmm. then that was a new thing. And, but it's, yeah. but it's, a fun, it's, a, it's a brave thing to do and a fun thing to do to just truly not know. Yeah. 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 And it creates a certain kind of immediacy, I think, and sort of tension and you know energy I think on screen this one was really um, different for me because it was a little more scripted but also more intricately structured there's there's multiple storylines and the last few films I've made have all been a few characters in one storyline linear you know we're telling one story linearly there's no flashbacks or anything and this was like a puzzle it was like a giant graduate level mm -hmm. <laughs> puzzle jigsaw puzzle in the edit room trying to figure out how to balance the stories, you know, how to, how much time to spend with one and the other, and I dropped lots and lots of scenes that I'd loved, loved, but just weren't serving the film anymore, you know, and and uh, so it was it was a very different process. So, so you're moving in your career, you're moving in a more kind of elaborate, complex direction. Avengers, maybe next, uh, Avengers, some kind of superhero, yeah, exactly. large scale uh, Iron Man <laughs> seventeen yeah, and a half. Yeah, yeah I'm just gonna get more and more convoluted. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you guys. I know we only have a few minutes left, but uh, your sister, sister to me, had such an interesting kind of arc just out in the world. You know, it played Toronto, it got a great reception there, and then it just, it, it felt to me like this indie movie that could, and that everybody who saw it liked it. It had a real word of mouth quality to it. Were you guys surprised at how it kind of took off, and, and how, how did you kind of experience the way the movie sort of seemed to keep percolating? Uh, even we were here last year at Sundance talking about it, and then it continued after that. Yeah, it had kind of a long coming out, you know, for one. And also, I think, I think it was just, a, it's a, it's a, I watched it for the first time by myself at home and it was one experience and it was a great experience. And then watching it with an audience, especially here, was a little bit like a rock concert. You know what I mean? Like it got a lot more laughs than I could have ever imagined. So it's kind of a film that like lives differently. Like if you watch it in your hotel room, when you order it, mm -hmm. it's one thing by yourself and it's another thing in an audience. That, but I felt like it worked in all those ways. So I'm unsurprised. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of have hopes. I said, to Lynn, you know, my husband's in touchy feely and, and office space a lot of people discovered later. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I hope they continue to discover this movie because I do think it's very yeah. special and whimsical, you know? Mm -hmm. 
So office space is the is now the model for cult. Exactly. There'll be cult uh, yeah, that's, you know, readings of it 12 years hit. from now. Yeah, exactly. In 2025, people don't will be studying it better. Bro. Exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> don't, don't put it out there. Um, I, I, we know we have to wrap up. Anything else either of you guys are seeing at Sundance that you've you've liked? Or I don't know if you, you get to go to movies? Do they let you out of the, <laughs> Not the really. press cage? No, I'm, luckily I'm here. You saw I everything mean, last year. Well, I saw everything in competition because I was yeah. on the jury, yeah. But... Um, and then I felt bad because I missed all these other films that weren't in that, com you know, in that category. There's just so many amazing films. And I have so many films by friends and friends of friends that I really, really want to see. Um, but I'm completely, I, I can't do any of them. I'm on so many panels and doing so much support for this film. Until that last, like, two, to, two and a half days of the festival, because I'm here the whole time. So I'm hoping I can squeeze in a few. But, um, yeah, I'm really excited by a lot of different films. Well, you're doing a lot of panels because I think I, I was at an event last night and Christine Lottie was there speaking and she's on the board for Sundance and she said, I think we're like making history here with the first time there's ever been 50% the female, female director. Yeah. So I think there's there's going to be a lot you yeah. know, that you guys are going to speak to and talk about because it's really a huge deal. Yeah. It's really exciting. Rose, is there any? I know there was uh, some films you were interested in. Uh, the Pussy Riot film was one. I want to see the Pussy Riot documentary yeah. um, and probably just the Pussy Riot documentary. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Well, you've been a big Pussy fan Riot. of them for you a do. long time. Yeah. Yeah. Is that, yeah. As of, yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, Lynn, Rose, thank you so much for being with us. Thank Good you, luck Steve. with the Thanks film. For See you next time.